Hi everybody, welcome to this week's SOS parenting video. I'm Sarah Ockwell Smith. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about toddlers and preschoolers who um, act violently, so who bite or who hit or who, who kick, how to cope in the moment as and when it happens and what to do to try to prevent it from happening in the future. So the first thing I should say is if you have a one, a two, a three or four year old who hits or bites or kicks, you often feel like you've done something terribly wrong as a parent. You feel like you're perhaps the only one in your, your, your family or your friendship group. But please don't worry. This is such a common behaviour for young children. And I can, I can almost certainly promise you it's nothing you've done wrong. And your child won't be violent or horrible forever. It's, it's kind of a normal stage of development that all kids will go through at some point. So what do we do? We have to think about what to do in the moment. So as and when they are hitting or biting or kicking or throwing or shoving or pushing, what we need to do first of all is to keep um, people safe. So we need to keep other children safe if their violence is directed to another child. We also need to keep animals safe if it's directed at a pet and also objects as well. So, you know, if you have something breakable in your home. And also I think your safety matters too. It's, it's not okay for them to hit and bite and kick you either. You know, it's okay to have a boundary that and say, I stop, I don't like that. So we need to think about safety in the moment when it happens. How do we do that? When your child is biting or hitting or kicking, what you want to do is to try to stop the behaviour as quickly as possible. So if you can actually reach them, what I would try to do is just to just sort of pick them up and or put them in your arms. And I don't mean grab them or squeeze them tightly or punish them with holding them or something. I mean, actually, you're kind of how gently as possible restraining them from hurting or breaking something. So when you've got them in your arms, I would just say, stop, I will not let you hit I will not let you bite I will not let you kick stop stop I will not let you hurt me stop I will not let you hurt your brother stop I will not let you bite your sister so whatever it is stop I won't let you bite hit kick or whatever and if you are there and you can get hold of them it's just sort of hold them in your arms move them away and to keep everybody safe if you can't get to them quick enough but they are hurting or biting or hitting or kicking a, a baby sibling then I'd be picking the baby or the little toddler up or I'd be moving the animal if it's an animal all the objects so whatever you can get to quickest now obviously when you do stop it by holding on to them saying stop I will not let you bite hit or kick they're going to get upset and that's okay because they don't really understand what's going on and you've stopped them from doing something that they were doing and it's okay that they get upset what you need to do here is to take a big deep breath and be calm remind yourself I am the adult here I need to share my mature brain development with my child so I need to not get angry if you shout at them if you hit them or bite or kick them back all you're going to do is to make their behaviour worse. You're going to show them that what, the way you deal with problems is with violence, is, is with yelling or whatever. So it's really important you take a breath and that you're calm. When you're calm, you've got them, you've moved out of the way. It's okay that they're going to cry, they're going to be angry, that's okay. Remind yourselves that this is happening because they're a young child with undeveloped impulse control and underdeveloped emotion regulation. So just stay with them whilst they're unhappy. Don't bother trying to talk to them through it. There's no point in trying to reason with a child who's very angry, very upset in the middle of the fight or flight response. It will just make them worse. And also they won't learn because they're so full of cortisol that they can't possibly take on board what you're saying. So it's a case of sitting somewhere quietly with them and just holding on to them and trying to help regulate their behaviour by regulating yours, by staying calm. When they are calm and you've maybe helped them to calm with a hug or just sitting with them and breathing quietly next to them, modeling how to behave then it's time to talk about why it's okay to be angry but it's not okay to hit it's okay to be frustrated but it's not okay to kick or shove or whatever so explain only when they are calm so that's how you coped in the moment in the emergency but what I think many people don't understand is this isn't going to stop it happening in the future it's going to happen again and again and again because they're young children with underdeveloped brains underdeveloped impulse control underdeveloped emotion regulation so by dealing with it well in the moment it doesn't mean that it's going to reduce the likelihood of it happening again because it will 
ultimately what changes here is time as they grow older and they learn how to cope with things um, with by, by not acting violently but what you can do when we're focusing so this is what I call my long-term discipline is we put our detective's hat on and we have to think about what is it that maybe triggered my child so what is it that was happening in the immediate couple of minutes before that behavior happened do they feel um, do they struggle when somebody else is in their space do they struggle when somebody else is using Using their toys? Do they struggle when somebody else won't share their toys? Do they struggle in certain environments like a toddler group? Are they struggling because they're feeling that they're disconnected from you? You know, maybe if you have a new sibling and you're cuddling and feeding and caring them for a lot, maybe their, their anger is directed at the sibling, but it's not about the sibling, it's about their connection with you. So putting your detective hat on, what we want to think about is what are the triggers? What's triggering my child from doing this? How is my child feeling? What could be going through their head? And how can you work to help them there? So sometimes it might mean if it's a very certain group that happens, that it always happens that maybe you could skip go into that group and try another one. If it happens at a certain time of day, maybe it might be an indication that they need a nap or you just need to keep a closer eye on them um, when they're tired. If it happens when they're at nursery or place a uh, preschool or something like that it may be that you need to ask the staff there to keep a closer eye and intervene more quickly but the idea is is that focusing on the why why are they doing this what are their triggers that's that along with brain development and then just getting older and being able to manage things more maturely that's the answer to reducing the behavior in the future how you deal with it in the moment keeps everybody safe and you know, it is a good way to diffuse the difficult behaviour as it happens, but it's not the prevention for the future. So what you need is both that in the moment and that prevention, two types of discipline, two types of parenting modelled together along with a bit of time and patience and reassurance that you're not a bad parent, your child isn't horrible, this is a normal phase of development and they will outgrow it. It's just about how you cope with it until they do. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any more similar questions on how to cope in the moment and with long term discipline, I cover this a lot in my The Gentle Discipline book. Um, and if you would like any more tips on how to handle behaviour with toddlers, preschoolers, babies, even older children, please do hit subscribe on my channel. I release a new video every week. I hope that helped. Thank you. Bye.